memorable and chilling intros win the race. When the virus struck, for obvious reasons, the first ones to go were the fatties. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for another top 10 horror movie opening scenes. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at more inventive, frightening, and throat-grabbing first scenes from classic horror films. If you're wondering where Freddy, Jason, and Michael Myers are, be sure to check out our first top 10 list of horror movie opening scenes. Also, you may be interested to know that a spoiler alert is now in effect. Are you even listening to me? Number 10. Don't mess with a gypsy. Drag me to hell. The opening scene from Sam Raimi's Drag Me to Hell is a perfect example of setting up the audience's expectation and the mood of the film. A family brings their son to a medium because he's been hearing demonic voices. We soon find out that this is because he stole from a gypsy, and in a matter of seconds, the ground opens up to swallow him into hell. Although at its core it's a horror film about gypsy curses and demons, Drag Me to Hell is also a pure romp and a twisted funhouse thrill ride. Therefore, the opening scene, with the mostly unrelated story set in 1969, simply lets us know what we've signed up for. Nos vamos a encontrar nuevamente. Number 9. Home Invasion. You're next. I'm gonna take a shower. Adam Wingard and Simon Barrett know horror movies. They are quickly becoming the new faces of horror, having been responsible for breaking the mold on many projects in the last few years. Your Next is no different. A film that seems on the surface to be a typical slasher home invasion film. However, this genre bender was made for the fans. The simple opening of the film features a couple in a secluded home being stalked and slaughtered by someone. Although we know we've seen this a million times before, Something in the cinematography and pacing warns us that this is not your typical masked killer film. Extra points go to fans that recognize acclaimed horror actor slash director Larry Fessenden as the first victim. <laughs> Number 8. Not your usual club scene. The Collection. Where is this place anyway? Setting up torture traps has become common in horror movies in the early 21st century. However, sometimes their scope and magnitude are enough to shock us and give us something we have never seen. Password. Um, never more. The opening to this horror sequel shows Elena and her teenage friends visiting a secret underground party. We soon find out why it's so secret. The collector seems to have planned this entire night in order to rack up a large number of victims. When Elena stumbles upon a hurt Arkin O'Brien, this sets up a terrible sequence that leaves the entire dance floor mowed down by a device resembling a giant lawnmower, and Elena kidnapped by the collector. Number 7. Keep them burning. Trick or treat. Babe, let's just take all this crap down. It looks like a crime scene. Trick or Treat was the surprise horror hit of 2007, becoming a cult favorite, as well as one of the best anthology films the genre has given us. The opening story of the film served double duty as the first tale in the anthology and the introduction to the connecting thread between these stories. Baby, I'm lit, and you're lit. Your you? little friend here, this night's over. Emma is your usual Halloween grump who just wants the night to be over. She prematurely blows out the jack-o'-lantern, despite her husband's warnings. What follows is an expertly paced sequence of false scares and mounting tension, with what seems like some inspiration from John Carpenter's Halloween thrown in for good measure. One thing's for sure, you don't mess with tradition. <laughs> Number 6. Family Drama – The Stepfather Horror 
horror fans are used to seeing the chaos and the killings on screen. The unsettling thing about watching the beginning of the classic 80s chiller The Stepfather is that we are thrust right into the end of the chaos, without even knowing it. Henry Morrison calmly gets ready in his bathroom, changes his clothes, takes a shower, washes off the blood, the usual morning ritual. We can tell something is wrong, but we don't fully find out until its great reveal, as Henry walks by his butchered family and steps out of the house. We know the story is just getting started, and that he'll move on to his next victims very soon. But his ice-cold demeanor is unforgettable. Number 5. A Day at the Beach. It Follows Dad, I'm sorry I can be such a shit to you sometimes. In the early 21st century, it seems that horror movies have been aiming for the jugular, with jump scares and violence galore. It Follows became an instant classic by going against the grain, and deciding on an unsettling tone from the moment the movie begins. Hey, are you okay? Yeah. As a worried girl runs away from her house, looking for an escape, we have no idea who or what is chasing her. The serene, quiet settings of the beach and the suburban street, and the minimal music, make this disheveled girl's terror even more palpable. It's the feeling of knowing something is wrong and not being able to help. The sudden reveal of the girl's demise, devoid of any jump scare music or screams, is beyond heartbreaking and disturbing. Just know that I love you, okay? I just really love you both. Number four, fire safety, Evil Dead. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. Although the original Evil Dead is a classic horror film, it did not have a very memorable opening, with the gang simply driving to the doomed cabin. When Fede Alvarez was tasked to reboot it, he knew he had to step it up. In his film, he goes back a few years and offers audiences a prologue in order to give us a glimpse of the Necronomicon and the power these demons have. We're witness to a brutal attack, capture and torture of a young girl as she's tied up and doused with gasoline. I'm so sorry, baby. <laughs> Daddy, what is that? <laughs> Just when we think these monsters are killing an innocent girl, her true demonic face is revealed, spewing threats and profanities at her poor father. Oh. Oh. You're so loud! You pathetic! Number 3. Roadside Assistance. Twilight Zone, the movie. Ain't no food upon a table. Our second anthology film opens with a prologue that's not only deliciously meta, but also seems quite out of place at first. The Twilight Zone TV show was known for being quite creepy and disturbing, as we watch comedy legends Albert Brooks and Dan Aykroyd on a road trip. Playing trivia games and singing along to classic rock tunes, we easily forget we're in a Twilight Zone film, let alone a sci-fi horror film. At the midnight special, shine a yellow love and light on me. Trying to kill some time and sharing their favorite episodes of the classic anthology series, Ackroyd turns to his driver and utters the classic words, You, you want to see something really scary? This smooth road trip immediately turns violent, and we are quickly thrust into familiar Twilight Zone territory. What are you doing? <laughs> Number two, have you checked the children when a stranger calls? Do you have any questions? No. Okay, great. Let's, we're late. Let's go ahead. Now here's a thriller that wastes absolutely no time. When a Stranger Calls features a young Carol Kane as a student who's hired as a babysitter one night. She's left alone in a big house, the children are asleep upstairs, and of course she starts getting some very creepy phone calls. Have you checked the children? What? The setup takes only a couple of minutes before the voice on the other end keeps calling, asking the vulnerable babysitter if she's checked on the children. Have you checked the children? Robert, I don't think this is very funny. The long opening scene and its shocking reveal build up the tension and help introduce one of the most gruesomely realistic horror films of the late 70s by brutally depicting every babysitter's biggest fear and the fear of anyone who's ever home alone for that matter. Hello? Why haven't you checked the children? 
Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. You're paying for my trip, Brownie. Just run that plane. It's all so predictable. There's no element of surprise. You can see everything coming. <laughs> Number one, a cemetery stroll, Night of the Living Dead. They ought to make the day the time changes, the first day of summer. What? Bringing you zombie classics since 1968, George A. Romero is well known as the godfather of the modern zombie movie. His low-budget gore fest, Night of the Living Dead, shocked audiences not only with its terrifying premise and explicit violence, but also with the promise of what a modern horror movie can actually be. Well, there's no one around. While Barbara and Johnny are on their way to visit their father's grave, Johnny takes advantage of the cemetery setting to scare his sister. Engraving the words, They're coming to get you, Barbara. Johnny's plans to scare his sister quickly turn sour when he's attacked and killed by the roaming undead. Luckily, Barbara escapes, but this isn't the last we'll see of Johnny. Johnny! Help me! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.